Administrator users and administrator roles are some of the trickier users to deal with really in any IT system, and that includes Office 365. And of course, that's because they have high level powerful access to the system. If a malicious attacker gains access through one of those users, well, they can do some real damage. So you want to take a careful guided approach to how you set up and establish your administrator users. You want to have some principles. And the principle in particular that I want to talk about in this video is the principle of least privilege. Now, in this case, I'm talking about principle, meaning a, um, a solid rule or a foundation, not the principle of your high school. And the principle of least privilege, if you're not familiar, simply states that any user should only have as much privilege as required to perform their job. And what that means in action, how that translates to in practice is you don't create a bunch of global administrator users that people use to access your system, even your administrators. You don't even use one yourself as a general rule. Instead, what you should do is you should create a few global administrator accounts, dedicated global administrator accounts, and set them aside. You don't use those accounts unless you have to. There are some things inside of Office 365 that you have to be logged in with a global administrator to do, but otherwise you want those just set aside and only for use in those specific cases. Also, you should probably have more than one in case you lose or are locked out of access to your only single global administrator account. Well, then you're kind of up a creek, right? So you want at least two and arguably you want somewhere between three and five, depending on the size of your implementation, your organization. So what are your administrator users? What do you use if you're not using a global administrator? Well, you create your own users to log in and you assign them specific permissions. Remember the principle of least privilege. You only assign as much privilege as required. So you may have a user who you want to be able to help with password reset options. You can grant that user the password reset ability without granting them administrative privilege all over the rest of the system. And get it? Then that user only has access to these specific things that they need to perform their job, and you don't have to worry about them having access to other things. This narrows down your exposure. It closes down the window of what you have exposed through your global administrator accounts. Setting up these admin users is easy. I'm going to come over here to my active users. So I have been inside of my videos logging in as super user CBTN, which if we pull this up, we can see is in fact a global administrator. There is my role, global administrator. I'm going to leave that. That's the user I created this tenant, this subscription under. But you know what? I'm going to start using this user, Ben Finkel at CBTN Rocks. So what I want to come down to, my roles here, you can see I don't have global administrator for this user. I can set them up as a plain user. I can set this user account as a plain user, which doesn't have any admin access. I can set them up as a global administrator, and that's what I would do if they were going to be one of those accounts that I was setting aside. Or I can set them up as a customized administrator, and I can say, you know what? What are the things that I, as an admin in the system, need to routinely do? And I can say, well, I need to do billing. I need to do exchange. I need help desk administrator that allows me to create support tickets and manage support tickets. I need to manage licenses. Uh, let's see, I need to do Power BI administration. I'm just making this up at this point. So these are the things that I decide that I need to do. I click save, and now this user, Ben Finkel at CBTN Rocks, is the user that has those permissions, and I should be logging in as this user going forward, not as the global administrator, not as the super user CBTN, and on the off chance that something comes up that I have to be a global administrator for, then I would temporarily log out this user, log in as this user, perform what I needed to perform, and then be done with it, go back to using this user again. Another really critical thing that you should almost certainly set up on hmm, arguably all of your users these days, but definitely on your administrator users. Any user that has any type of administrator role period, you want to set up multi-factor authentication. And we cover all of that in another skill, but that's a really important secondary security mechanism that you should apply to your administrator accounts. And that forces users global or rather administrator users, not just global administrators, but any administrator user to have two different factors to log in, not just their password, but also something like a key fob or a dongle or an authenticator code in their email or texted to their phone. And that way you can have an extra assurance that the person logging in is in fact the appropriate individual who has that access. So that covers a little bit about using the principle of least privilege to structure and set up your administrator roles inside of Office 365. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.